Hey, welcome back, Captain Ron here. Uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the basics of a rotor head on a gyro plane, gyro copter, auto gyro, they're basically all the same. Uh, all of your gyro planes with a two-bladed rotor system, uh, they incorporate the same basic design. And originally, years ago, I think back in the 60s, Igor Benson, that uh, designed the Benson gyroplane, or gyrocopter back then, uh, come up with what they call an offset gimbal head. Now the off get, offset gimbal head got its name from your, your, your lifting force is here, and then it's offset where your forward and aft pivot is. So the weight of the gyroplane hangs on this line of sight here, and then your rotor blades lift here, so it's offset to give the gyroplane stability in when you're controlling the rotor head and the disc. So that's why your gyroplane nose is down all the time because the weight is forward of the lifting force. But all gyroplanes have, have basically the same design. Now this is, this rotor head here is obviously without a pre-rotator, a rotor brake and a rotor tachometer. So different manufacturers use different options. For instance, all basically all gyroplanes have a pre-rotator. That's a device that spins up the rotor blades before you take off down the runway. And it incorporates, this is an auto gyro rotor head. This incorporates a ring gear. And then it has a Bendix gear here that engages the two gears together. And the mechanism for the pre-rotation can either be uh, uh, a starter motor located here or a hydraulic pump that drives the spendix or it could be a flexible cable so there's various designs for pre-rotation devices but they all basically have to have a ring gear and a bendix and uh, in the in the and these are very simple the nothing on a gyroplane is heavily loaded so we'll, we'll just take this rotor head apart for you so you can uh, see the, uh, the difference. They all have a main bearing here. And the main bearing is uh, generally a double row ball bearing. It's, it's, it's a heavy duty bearing. As you can see, the shaft diameter in here is large, but they use a smaller bolt to hold it up. So you're not overstressing this at all. So anyway, that's basically the, the consistency of this gyroplane. And it also has a rotor tack that monitors your rotor RPM. So it's basic. And as far as the, where the rotor blades fit, you got a, a, a teeter bolt. The teeter bolt rides on a couple of bushings. Some manufacturers use bearings, but in reality, bushings are, are good because this teeter bolt teeters just minutely, so it doesn't really wear much on the bushings. And some of these bushings, uh, manufacturers require lubrication, and we'll get into that a little later. This here rotor head is off a gyrotechnic gyroplane. And it's, it's set up really nice. It's got the pre-rotation to it and the Bendix mechanism here for the engagement of the pre-rotator into the ring gear. And it also has, uh, the, the rotor brake is unique. The rotor brake here, most rotor brakes like on this one here, there's a brake shoe that that forces up against the bottom of the ring gear. This one here, uh, they actually push against this edge of the ring gear hydraulically. So that's the differences. Uh, they're very simple. In, in fact, on the Gyro Technic, they use basically the same kind of bushings. They're kind of Teflon, Teflon impregnated bushings that have this inner race that rides on it. And then you have the uh, Tita bolt 
that fits through it. So as, as the blades teeter in flight, you have minute movement here. So this doesn't require lubrication. And, and, and if the manufacturer does require lubrication, they always tend to have a specific grease that you should use on these rotor heads. For instance, the auto gyro uh, does, have, does require lubrication. There's uh, lubrication points here and, uh, and then on the hub bar. Here's the hub bar and all gyro planes have a hub bar with both each blade connected to the, each end of the hub bar. Okay, and you'll see this grease fitting here. Well, if you have to grease it, if it's required grease, then like I said, most greases today will provide the adequate lubrication. Uh, and, you, and this is a handy little device, it's called lock and lube. You squeeze this, snap it on there. And you can actually do this with one hand. Once you snap it there, there you go. Then you can hold, cause you're probably up on the ladder. Then you can hold this grease gun in one hand and grease it a couple of squirts. Now, starting the auto gyro, there are some people that recommend that you, you take your bushing, your teeter bolt bushing, you take this and you, you grease the, the bolt up and then slide it through the bushing and push the old teeter bolt out as you push the new one in. But really, actually that scrapes all the grease off. So I, in, in my opinion, that's not really effective. So it's best to, as the manufacturer prescribes, grease this grease fitting here to adequate grease the uh, bushings. Well, I hope that's helped and thank you for watching.